Hey, hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome. Happy Sunday. <laughs> How we doing, guys? I hate, hate saying happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy, happy Sunday. Hey, we could go into full-blown Ren and Stimpy mode if you want. Happy, uh, happy, yeah. joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Yeah, happy, happy, joy, joy. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, now you're mad at me. <laughs> well, Sunday mornings are good and Sunday afternoons not so good, you know, because you just have to go back to work tomorrow and ugh. Yeah, no lie. Glenn says pre Monday. Yeah, that's about it. Hey Roger. Hey Val. Yeah. Hey and True. I and all of them now too. <laughs> I know. And there's Gary and and uh, Freaky and oh my gosh, am I missing them? Everything just keeps going up here. Um, we decided today that we're going to revisit Gettysburg because um, that last video we showed on on uh, last Sunday's show. Hit me and Randy like crazy. We're just like, look at this, look at this, look at this. And it's very compelling evidence. So Randy has worked tirelessly to find us a enhanced video close up so we can actually see what's going on, which if you've not seen it up close, it is fantastic. Yeah. Um. So. When we get ready to get started, and uh, you normally do your spiel, but since you seem to be having a little bit of a headache, and I gonna, I'm gonna punch it out for you. I want to knock it out for you today. Just okay. Let's see how good you do, Randy. Let's go. Oh no, they ain't no good about it. I'm just gonna do it. It ain't gonna happen. Oh. But good. Good was not <laughs> so a good about it. Just do all right? it. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. So after after we get done today, you got seven o'clock tonight instead of six o'clock. Yeah, uh, we're in Texas front porch. You got uh, Tex and uh, Danielle gonna be there with in in. Yeah, infamous minds. See, I told you it wasn't gonna be good. Uh, infamous mm -hmm. minds, and uh, this this uh, week they're covering the Oklahoma Bigfoot mur murder, is what they call it. So they're gonna be covering that. one. So you might want to swing over there. And uh, then you got tomorrow night. You've got at seven o'clock. You've got Central Time. These are Central Time, mind you. These are Central Time. Tomorrow night at seven, you got Diva Dimension. And then at eight o'clock, eight fifteen. Sorry, they're shifting at about fifteen minutes. Give them a little leeway. But at eight fifteen, we start with Texas Front Porch. Tuesday night, we have Beyond BMR. And uh, what else we have on Tuesday night? Nothing. That's it Bom for Tuesday. Night, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Wednesday, we got Donnie Cho says stuff, and which this week is going to be me and Texas talking the Monday Night Wars. So that's going to be fun. Uh, you got that, and then we've got In Humanoids with uh, Barton Unley. That comes in at uh, eight o'clock, I believe. Mm -hmm. And eight then time. on. Thursday night, we have 7 o'clock. We have our newest show, Our Paranormal World with Monica Rollins, followed by the Blondes and Booze podcast. That's at 8 o'clock. And then on Friday nights, at, are y'all still doing 7 on Friday nights? Yes. Okay. Yes, 7 o'clock on Friday nights, and we still have, we now have, at 7 o'clock, we have <laughs> Blondes, Booze, and the Woo. I, I'm just, I've kind of even gotten away from doing the Woo thing. I'm just saying, okay, it's just two, two versions of Blondes and Booze. We got Thursday night and Friday night. That's so we right. got the Blondes and Blues again, and then uh, after that, y'all y'all feed right into Josh's uh, Paranormal Roundtable. So, exactly. Uh, are you reading that? Are you reading that? No, I'm not reading nothing. You got to remember, I'm the one that has to download all this stuff and put it out to, pay, to on the uh, different shows and stuff. Uh, I'm your daughter wants to know why you keep changing your title. Oh, are you having an identity crisis? I forgot. I, I was covering for her on Monday night, so I was the new Smith Smith. I tried to find my wig so I could have the actual braids and everything, too, but I couldn't find it. So. Anyway. There you go. Yeah. So, anyway, but uh, see, in Saturday, obviously, we don't really have anything right now. We got a couple of people like to do late nights now on uh, Saturday, so be prepared. Uh, we do have also Paranormal Paul with Paranormal Among Us. He does his show on Saturday evenings as well. So, everybody. Check out all those shows, have fun with them, and if you miss them, go <laughs> check out the podcast because the podcasts are out on Spreaker and anywhere you can uh, get your podcast downloaded. That's out. right. That's Preferably right. Spreaker because it's easier on me. 
All right, got it. But that, right. Yeah. But, you know, I, I wanted to talk just a hair about yeah. Texas show tonight. Just a hair. Yeah. Because for, for anybody that doesn't watch the infamous mind show on Texas Front Porch, he's going on at 7 o'clock tonight. But this is, again, about the Oklahoma Bigfoot murders. And what it is, is this guy is using, in his defense, mm -hmm. that his friend says that he was going to feed him to Bigfoot. That's why he killed him. Exactly. <clears throat> so, can I give wow. a? Uh, and this is I, going on right now. Yeah, but can I can I give an update or can I give a spoiler alert on it? No, it probably you cannot ain't work. It probably ain't you gonna can't. work. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not a spoiler. That's just common sense. That's not going well, to work. Yeah, you know, I mean, you Randy, I could, I could, I could, in. <laughs> right? I could kill anybody and say, oh yeah, they said they were going to feed me to a dog man. How many times have you heard people say that the demons made me do it? Right. And right. how many times has it actually worked? Nah, no. Maybe once. And then, Maybe. then the guy went. And then, you know, they're, they're committed for life. You're never going to see them out. They're still never going to see the light of day again. Exactly. All, all that right. happens is they don't have to go into a prison type environment and, and no. they get, they get uh, you know, Corporal uh, punishment <laughs> off the like table. Pancho. Pancho said it right. I did it because I could. <laughs> right, right. I just I just couldn't imagine killing somebody. Oh, they said they were gonna feed me to Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah. Um what's that? How about when you call mom Bigfoot? Oh no, we're not talking about calling mom Bigfoot or, or no. Uh, that's a whole nother story now. And uh of course my daughter has to bring that up. I'm gonna say it real quick, like though. I used to smoke. I used to smoke and I used to fake quit smoking and I would sneak around and get me a smoke whenever I could type thing. And I went out to our back area, our backyard and I in between two buildings and, and I turn around and I, I wasn't smoking that time though. I wasn't smoking at all. I was actually just doing what country boys do. We go between the buildings and go pee. All right. You turn around, I turn around and there she is behind one of the trees looking, trying to catch up to me. I'm like, like, what are you trying to do? Be Bigfoot. From that point on, I called her Bigfoot. Oh, and my okay. daughters remind me of it all the time. Yeah. So, yay. Yay. All right. Gary so. says you got to remember what shape they were in when he said it. You know, I mean, we're going to have to watch Texas show to figure it out, but yeah. I, he's still using that. Yeah. Regardless I, he, of he, what shape he was all in the way then, he is he's not still. From it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, and as, far, and as far as I know, drug related um, murders and things that, that, that doesn't help your case. That actually makes no. it worse. Yeah. Yeah. They, mm -hmm. they tend to look at you a little bit closer then. So, yeah. Um, and I'm going to try this time. I'm going to try to do a better job. I've noticed when I had um, Jason on here. Now, remember, this show goes out to podcasts as well. I got to do a mm -hmm. little bit better job of explaining some of these videos that we're looking at in pictures. So people that are listening to it can go, well, what the hell is he looking at? I don't know what he's looking at. <laughs> uh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So we will, we will start doing that. Not, not because, you know, everybody here can, can see it, but the people who can only listen and not see what we're looking at. Yep. Um, that's, and that's I'm going to get we're... scolded at the end. I already know I'm going to get scolded at the end. Cause I did not fix the intro or the extra to show, Oh, the email address at the very first of it and stuff is still at the end. So, I know. Yeah, I, I've only I'm been on them about you. that because it's like we, we were like saying, well, send your stuff to the email, but you can't even see the email. Well, you can. You just got to stay through the credits. It's like a post credit scene. All the scene, way people. to the it's end. It's just like a post credit scene. You just got to wait and see what the Marvel characters are going to do next. All right. <laughs> okay. So tell us slowly what the email is. R N G the letters, not R and G R N G Romeo November golf woodworking woodworker woodworking. God, I don't even remember now. Hang on. I'm going to tell you. Real quick. <laughs> I just went completely blank woodwork. Sorry here. You know what? I'm going to do this the easy way. 
There. How's that? There you go. See? Now you got it. Now you got it. All right. So that's that's the email. If you got any any uh evidence you'd like us to look at or or dissect or or say you have caught the greatest thing since sliced bread, let us know and we will make it happen. That's How's right. That? All right. Are we ready? We are ready. On to the first video. We're going to go right where we left off last week, obviously. Now, everybody remembers the soldier picture that we said. And, and you know what? I probably should show that just out of out of spite, shouldn't I? To show, remind people where we left off at. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, that... Still, it still throws me off just looking at the picture. And then somebody told us, I, obviously, Paul told us, and uh, I think it was uh, uh, Glenn might have said something about it. They told us that there was a video out about it. So let's see. I'm going to share the screen. Yeah, Paranormal Paul was uh, telling us about it, too. Yeah. He was the one who told me where to find it and who to get it from. But this is the first one. This is where we left off last week. This is the soldier picture in front of the cannons. Now... After watching the video 9,000 times in the last week, just because I thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen in my life, just about. Right. Other than, you know, Patty and a couple other pictures and a couple other videos I've seen. But this was by far one of the best ones I've ever seen out of Gettysburg, for sure. But I'm sitting there looking at it. And I'm like, OK, well, let me look at this thing. And I was like, OK, listen to these guys do this on this. Now, we're not going to show the whole video because it's, it's somewhere else on YouTube. You can find that. I'm going to show the, the TikTok version, which is condensed down, so the sound is going to be a little bit off compared to what the other one was. But the way they reacted to it, I was like, okay, they weren't expecting to see this. And I didn't expect to see it either. I mean, they're talking about, you know, the, the actual units over there, the 150th field artillery. They're talking about, you know, the different people that are that are supposed to be in that area and where certain things happened on the battlefield. And then uh -huh. they stop and they park and they, this this starts to happen. I don't know if you can debunk it. Um, quite frankly, I think you might be able to, but it would take a lot more than somebody, two guys sitting in a truck to do it. And that's from what I could hear and what I see. It is. So, we are going to drop this now. Now, here's the TikTok version. We're here in Gettysburg, just before the 150th. Which I stopped. Going, I am going to go ahead and mute this because, like I said, this is the first part of the audio, but this is the actual video. They did not change the audio at all. And they so, spliced it, so. They, did some splicing. It's a typical TikTok TikTok thing. You know the deal. Yeah. I'm gonna kill the audio there. You see him walking at the back there. Yep. Okay. So there's the two cannons there, and then you see this this figure. Um, yep. coming up. We can't tell. We can't tell how far back he is either. Too when he first no. manifests. I'll bring it right. back. Right. We see this so. figure walking around the back of one of them, and coming yep. in between. But two. he's coming from the wood line right there, you know, it looks like. Yeah, and it, it looked like he just kind of appeared. It, it, yeah. And now he's walking between the two yep. and walking around the first cannon that's closest to us in the picture. Now, he kind of disappears there. Yeah, he doesn't come back. This one doesn't come back. Yeah, this one doesn't come back. It was the other one that we'll see here in a few minutes. Right. All right. So I've seen overlays many times, obviously. We've seen it happen with ghost pictures. We've seen it happen with videos, you know, where they've overlaid something to make it to make it like a double exposure almost. And at first, if you just if you're just looking at this and you're thinking about a double exposure to to create the overlay effect. As he comes up, he wouldn't be cut off here. The overlay would cover the entire thing. So his legs and such would be seen at this point. That's right. And as he comes up and goes around, I mean, you know, you, you, you see right there. I mean, I'm going to back it up. Just look, as he's walking, you can see his legs behind the actual spokes. 
the spokes block it out. He is going between those two cannons. Yes. So, you know, at, at first I would say, you know, okay, this could easily be an overlay, especially when I look, look at just the picture. When you look at just the picture, you're thinking, oh, it could just be an overlay. It could be. Well, a, if you're looking at exposure. if you're looking at the actual photo that we had, which is, of mm -hmm. course, just a snapshot of this video, it's yeah. about right where you stopped it, right there. Yeah, right here, right in this area. Yeah. In fact, it might even be a little bit more. I'm gonna see if I can add it to the stage as well. See, it's a little bit more. You can see it almost like you come forward. So if we go back to this again. Right about there would be where he where that picture came from. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I know that the picture has been a little bit enhanced and such. When I found it, obviously, it was out on the internet. So nobody would ever play with anything on the internet and make it look better than what it might actually be, right? So, but I, I it's still confounding me. I mean, it really is because overlays slash. Photoshopping slash, you know, uh, Adobe Premiere movie making stuff. I don't see anybody, especially, you know, maybe they did it after they got to that. Of course, that's where it walks away. But after they got to the uh, to the truck, the, away from the truck and away from the area, maybe they took it and did some stuff with it. I don't know, but it doesn't seem likely to me. I mean, they, re they well, reacted to this. So you know how you know how videos get once they're shared and shared and yep. enhanced and yep. enhanced and shared um th they lose they they become pixelated and they lose a yep. lot of what the original looked like now yep. if you back up to the to the picture that looks like from the original yeah, yeah I, that I, looks I like the it, original well, and that's the wide the widescreen version of this that's out on on uh, uh, YouTube. Obviously, the TikTok version, you're going to get squared up. You're going to get, you know, maneuvered around. And then there's stuff. It's probably not even 1080 like this one is. It's probably 10, 720p. So it's a little bit less of a quality. Right. Like, like I said, eye? it's, it's yeah. manipulated. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's and, why the original video is just so cool. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, I, it's a YouTube video. I mean, I don't think they've got. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to take a chance on putting it up there and then get mad at me for putting it up there. So that's why Ex I haven't done it. Exactly. That's why you'll see a lot of the stuff that we take is from TikTok. Um, um, yeah, YouTube we kind of leave alone. Yeah, we just don't want them to bug us or beat us up or anything like that. Exactly. But you know, e even like we said with that one, and with this one, just watching the movement of the soldier. I mean, and then it just disappears. The way it disappears there is another thing that caused me to pause because it's like it went behind a mirror or went behind a wall. And once again, we're talking about <coughs> did somebody stage this? Did somebody put this overlay film on this to make it look like this? And I, I don't think I can't so. see any evidence of that. I can't see any evidence of, a, of the telltale evidence of a true overlay because, it, quite frankly, it should have been more. Uh, defined the figure would have been more defined i think uh, well it, not only that i don't think they could have done it as well as you could see the legs coming through the spokes of the wheel yeah that not you know not at their level i mean unless there's some sort of uh movie producer i don't know about i mean if doug doug's out there helping them out on this maybe i don't know but i don't think he'd do it either but either way i'm just saying they uh, do they have the means do they have the know-how do they have the uh so yeah, you don't all to even do it. Yeah, just because you can't you, do you it, don't know, like but yeah. it is compelling just yes, by compelling. where where it disappears, like right in front. It it starts yeah. walking around the can, and then it, it just goes. It just goes. It's like it just, but it's at, in mid walk, and it just kind of it doesn't just snap and gone. It just it kind of fades out as it makes that next step. Yeah. See so what. As it gets to the where it turns, it's going in front and then step and fade out. And then gone. And you're like, okay, what did I just see? Now, can you imagine if you were on the ground and saw that? Yeah. See, this is, saw that? this is where I have a hard, hard time with believing that this is residual. Yeah. I don't believe it is residual only because I know them cannons have not been sitting there since 
that man no. was there. They've been, but moved they have been moved and and and, and yeah. you know pushed around and placed there. And so, is it residual energy from the cannon, maybe? Yeah. Or is it residual yeah. energy from the property? But he's moving around those cannons in between those cannons like there's a purpose. Yeah, or like he recognizes the cannons are there. Something I. I, I'm not thinking that this is residual. I am thinking that this is completely and intelligent. Actually, yeah. He knows what he's doing. Type right. Thing. I mean, because nothing, uh, just like with the the Alamo in San Antonio, it's not, it's the physical Alamo where it's at right now is not in the same place it was in 1836. Okay. So that physical Alamo <clears throat> These physical cannons get moved by whoever needs to move it to wherever to make sure they get the most bang for the buck. Because, quite frankly, any of these things that you go to see, the Alamo, the Gettysburg, Manassas, any of that, that's a money grab. It's a tourist trap. Right. It's a straight out, and they, they can grab at me, yell at me about it, whatever they want. But I'm telling you, it's a tourist trap. It's so they can make money. And that's because if they don't make money, nobody else gets to see these things, and they can't upkeep the stuff properly. And I fully understand that. Would right. you would you consider this? Dorothy Dorothy says a brandy a lot of has been set the way it was on the battlefield it, as it was that day. Yes. Yes. Honestly, but is it the same cannons? That it's we don't to, know. We don't. We don't know. No, we and, don't know and, for sure, but. And could could they be exactly spot on by putting everything back the way it was? No, they can only go by drawings and things like like that yeah. left for yeah. us to look at. Yeah. <clears throat> but and, this reminds know. me of something that we could have a haunted object. Yes, very well could. And like Ristol says, though, is that many of the cannon emplacements of Gettysburg have been placed as close as they could originally. As, to yeah, original as, as to the original. But this as is not going to be exact. So if you're not exactly, and, and I would postulate, you know, if it's not, oh, good Lord, big word. Hang on, time out. I don't know what the heck came out of me on that one. Uh, <laughs> big oh, words, big words. Big words. Okay. I would say, honestly, that even if they're not in the same spot, say they're even a little bit off, if it was residual, they'd possibly go through the cannons instead of, you know, because they're following right. a straight yeah, line. But that's, that's the comment that I made that yeah, yeah. He, he actually was walking with a purpose yeah. in between them. Yeah, he saw and them walking and around. Went around them. Yeah, and went around. So, you know. Yeah, I would say I'm with you on that. I would say if it's if it's residual, it's got to be attached to the cannon, is what I would think too. I, I yeah, I, I would think it, it it is a haunted object. Whether I don't think it in this particular case, I don't think it's the property. I think it's the object. Yeah, it very well could be, and. And the only way we'd ever figure this out, now this is obviously from uh edited version of May 3rd, 2013 video, video. Why has nobody gone out there and set up a long-term camera to just see if it comes back? Probably because like, I can't leave them out there or they're afraid they'll be stolen. Yeah, yeah most likely. I can understand that. Uh, so, But, I mean, if I had seen that, honestly, I would be spending the rest of my trip at that area right to see if I could right if I could get it to do it again or recreate it somehow, honestly. The way I understood it from what I read on this, they spent another two and a half, three hours in that same spot trying to wait and see if something else happened. And nothing else did. And nothing else did. This was this was it. So they won the lottery <laughs> and got something that they never thought they were gonna see. Now I've seen other videos out there that look that are people say, Oh, look at this soldier this Soldier runs between cannons or whatever, and it, it's nothing but, quite frankly, it's really nothing but as you're driving, you know how the, you can call it pareidolia, you can call, call it whatever you want, but it's like a play of light that looks like a figure going across, but mm -hmm. it goes so fast, there's no there's no way it's an actual apparition. It's literally got to be associated with the movement of the car. Right. So, <clears throat> But I'm just, anyway. I'm, like I said, I am thinking that this is a haunted object. I really do. Yeah, I mean, because, I mean, we'll watch it again just for, you know, giggle. I, I almost said it again. Giggles. <laughs> so, yeah. Blanking. Um, 
see, it says, Glenn Glenn says, Glenn says, although it looks like a Confederate soldier among Union guns. Yeah. Now, I, I'm going to tell you this, that when they had won battles and things like that, they took all of the weapons available to them from them. So mm -hmm. could they have, um, you know, someone else's, you know, weapons? Absolutely. So that, you know, that doesn't surprise me. I mean. Yeah. And well, and while, while, yeah, we could say that's Confederate soldier, but you know, we don't know for sure. I mean, I haven't seen an apparition that has been color conducive to anything really, unless it was, you know, a full blown apparition that you could actually, you know, see the color of the of right. Skin. A full, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking this a is full just a manifestation. So while this is quote unquote a good, a very good manifestation, I mean, we may not be seeing an actual Confederate. It may still be a Union soldier. I just can't tell from the 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 actual, you know, the look of that. You know, back up just two seconds. The look of that particular outfit as he comes around that's probably the best look right there because it looks like a little sash is like going across there that makes me think he's a cannoneer artilleryman right off the bat mm -hmm. either that or he's as, as yeah because you can see down. it you can see it going yeah. straight across him i mean that is that yeah. is a he's either carrying a a bandolier of of ammo or he's carrying powder that's a powder powder uh i hate to say powder keg but that's it's not really keg, they're powder uh, satchel where they load. Yeah. So I hmm. I, yeah. I, I believe I believe that the original video of this one hundred percent is yeah. actual spirit activity. Yep. Yep. That I I have not seen anything that that would say otherwise. And it, yeah, and it's so hard to see it, unfortunately. I can't let me see, maybe I am going to try. I'm going to try this. This is, and I'm going to move it around. You may hear us in the background still, but this now, is going to be the full video, but I'm going to try and zoom it in. Like what we looked at right. earlier. Right. Crystal I'm J says, I don't, Crystal J says, I don't understand haunted objects. I mean, when I pass, I don't intend to haunt my most favorite pair of earrings or a car. Yeah. Let me tell you about how many people are, obsessed with material items and you know a, a, a car a house uh you know jewelry it's all kinds of things even hairbrush it, it could be anything it could yeah. be anything that they've attached themselves to because either it's not their most beloved thing but it's the thing they remember yeah. you know so they attach themselves to something like that um yeah. I, you know, who knows? I, this could have been a tragic event for this soldier. I mean, he could have been running around to to light the cannon, and then he was shot. Or who who yeah. knows? I mean, it doesn't have to be a happy place. It could be a tragic place, also that they cling to. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, well, and like sitting right beside me right here, I've got a 1968 New Victor New Vic New Victor RCA Victrola, Victrola right? Victor that one y'all mm -hmm. I showed y'all the video that I got it where it's playing again and listen. If anything was attached to anything, my grandmother would be attached to this. This thing was in my grandmother's house and we listened to it. Or a, billions it's a definite, of hours. It, it would be a definite draw for her, absolutely. Yes, yes. If she was still here in some way, shape, or form, and I ain't gonna say she ain't because she's probably I'm half level. If I get smacked in the back of the head, you'll you'll know it's her. So uh but you know, yeah, I, I'm with you. I mean, they whatever they felt strongest with, or they can remember most after death is what I probably should right. say. Right. It's it's but, what whatever that clicks with them. And like yeah, I said, it doesn't me, even have to be their favorite thing or favorite place. No. It could be in the tragic place. It could have been, you know, yes. just something that they recognize. And so they're like clinging on to whatever in the human realm that they can cling on to. Let's see, like he's, I'm assuming Poncho, he said bass rig. I'm, he's either bass rig or bass rig. I don't know which one he's going. If he's talking about bass guitar, I'm probably no, with the guy. No, 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 no. Uh, bass. Bass. Okay. All right. Just making sure. Because uh, if I got a haunted boat, then I'm in world hurt. But now I can guarantee you, if it's me, 
My guitars are going to have me. Well, you know, we can <laughs> talk about the Queen Mary at some point and, yeah, and how that boat idea. is haunted. Oh, there that's, is that's that. on the list. Trust me. That's on, that's on our list. <laughs> yeah. I've already started researching it. So, because that was right. one just catches me every time it's on it's on any show. It captures me because I want to. And I even watched, uh, was it the Ghost Hunters that, that uh, did the uh, investigation on it that time? It was the wet footprints, you know, that they found. Mm hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, that's a, that's another bucket list. That one in the maybe we Waverly should do Hill. a show on haunted boats. Ooh, that'd be kind of cool. I mean, because yeah. people still say the Brit uh what was it the the Britannic the the one that was uh, associated with the Titanic or was it the, the, the Olympic went down. Uh, Titanic went down. Britannic, I think, is still afloat or still as a museum, and or it's the Olympic. One of the two. There was three of them. Yeah, and I, I one of them, and it's still. They say to this day it's still haunted. I just don't know where it's at. I have to do some more research on it. So, <laughs> yeah, they say that the one down in Alabama, uh, in Mobile, that that. Uh... Wait, wait. Okay, wait a second. Time out. Whoa. What do you mean? How low can I go? What are you talking about? Bass? Or is it bass or bass? Tell me what it is. <laughs> is it a fish or musical instrument? Yeah. Tell me what we got. <laughs> <laughs> I, my kids already know that I'm gonna when I die I'm getting cremated and they're gonna mix me in a in a uh, gallon of paint and they're gonna paint me on the ceiling so I can watch their butts. Yes, Paul, you are absolutely correct. The Titanic Museum in Branson, Missouri, is supposedly haunted. Yep. Yes, and it is. You think so? I've, I've never been, been there. there so I don't know. I've been there. It is. It definitely is. Um, there, it, it's it's definitely weird, weird stuff. Yeah. Um, you won't notice it as much if the museum is busy, but you will notice it more when it's not. When it's nice and quiet. Yeah, that's usually more at closing time. Yeah. You know, when it's getting close to closing time, it gets real quiet in there at points, and you're just like, oh, okay. So you tell me night at the museum takes on a whole new uh, <laughs> life there? <laughs> well, it does. I mean, um, you know... I'm going to say that the Tennessee Wraith Chasers, which mm -hmm. are, you know, uh, yeah. very famous. They were on TV, had a TV show, blah, blah, blah. They had been there. Yeah. They they do regular events there. So they, they you know, basically take that place at nighttime and then have ghost hunting things going on. Uh, Zach Baggins and his crew were there and did a, a complete show on it. And I don't I don't believe much in what he says. But so um, you just sullied our podcast. Thank you very much. I am so sorry. Um, I, but, yeah, I recommend bucket. going. Oh. I recommend going. You're going to have to give yeah. yourself a good three hours, um, three and a half hours, maybe four. But I, I recommend either going first thing when they open or try to, you know, go when, it, the, you know, the least busy times. You usually can Google what their least busy times are and go and go and, you know, during that time. Uh, yeah. But there, there are things, there are noises that happen in there, and there's nobody in the room with you or whatever. But yeah, I recommend going because it it brings out emotions in you uh, just by reading the history, going through the artifacts, things like that. And it's very a, a, an emotional journey, and I think that opens up a lot of um, leeway for spirits to start showing themselves. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, I do, I do well, recommend that one. Now, now, as we're talking about that, we were talking about, I was talking about the Olympic, Britannic, and the Titanic. Kevin Bode, that's something I didn't know before. Now, I'm going to have to look that one up a little bit, but if that's the case, things just got a little weirder right there, you know? No doubt. No yeah. doubt they got a little weird. So, I mean, and he states, uh, <laughs> like I said, I'm going to do a better job of explaining some of this stuff to the Olympic is the Titanic. It was insurance fraud. The Olympic was wrecked three times before the incident. So there's he's saying that this wasn't the Titanic at all. It was the Olympic. They just renamed it after the fact. Or renamed it before it left. So they were thinking they were getting on a, on a brand new ship that wasn't really brand new. So I don't know that much history about that. I don't either. I mean, uh, I haven't researched it enough, but you know, now that you tell me that about the, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, Titanic, Titanic Museum. Museum. Mm -hmm. 
then again, you know, museums should be haunted. As much history as and as much stuff as is in them, they should be haunted. I'm going to tell you that every museum that I have been in that's worth anything at all, you know, some mm-hmm. of them I think are a sham, but yeah. anything that has real history artifacts, yeah, I've had fantastic results at. From little oh, yeah. ones to big ones. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I I do recommend going to those if you can, if you get a chance to. Yep. And um, actually, the small town museums are my favorite. Oh, yeah. The little hole in the walls. Yes. Yes. With the, with the local history in it and everything. Yeah. They have, the you know, just the little building, you know, and, and they have like their local artifacts and things associated to around, you know, around that area. Yeah, those are good ones. Yeah, and, and that's the same thing here. Like when you go into, you've been to the Haunted Hill House in Mineral Wells. Yes, yes, okay. and I'm going back. When you when you drive into Mineral Wells, you notice the big Vietnam Museum that's over on the left-hand side of the road. Yes. That Vietnam War Memorial Museum that's there, it, it's been a brainchild, and the Vietnam vets of the area are the ones that really have put that thing entirely together i used to run a, a ultra race every year not physically run it i actually administered i was the, i was one that took care of all the paperwork and all the stuff to do, do this race because you uh-huh. ain't gonna see this boy run for eight hours it was called the eight hour run from the ducks and <laughs> these guys would get, i'm not gonna see this girl uh, doing it either i'll be like hi <laughs> literally i'm looking at these guys like y'all getting out and running for eight hours for what now is something chasing you do i don't know that's it but I would go out and set up the route, and we, my family helped out. I mean, we we ran it, so we made decent little money, and it went toward the building fund for that Vietnam Museum. We ran it for ten years, and uh, I drove by it the other day, and I see the buildings up and everything. I wanted to go in, but then I started thinking people don't even realize what that area really had because that if you if you're pulling into wet, into Mineral Wells to the right, it's called Walters Industrial Complex. Now, it used to be called Fort Walters. Fort Walters was where all the Huey pilots were trained before going to Vietnam. Yeah. And see, I wonder, I wonder, you know, on those things, I've never actually gotten into a military type museum and been able to. Now I've been into museums where they've had a military section, but I've not been into a full on military museum, Um, which that's on a bucket list for me. Uh, Because I really want to see and hear what 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 comes back from that. Yeah, it it should be interesting because, like, you know, Fort Bliss has one there that's the uh, Air Defense Artillery Museum, and it's been gone done several times. You know, changed here, changed there, but it's still got the artifacts that was in it from before. But those artifacts may not actually have residuals or anything like that because they're inanimate pieces. You know, they were talking about shells. We're talking about you know, rockets. We're talking about pictures. Um, but there is a place called the Pershing House, which was the house of John J. Pershing back during the uh, Mexican, or I shouldn't, the, the Spanish American War time frame when he was okay. running stuff okay. down there. Yeah, I, I would I would assume that in in like that Vietnam Museum that everything would be kind of like attachment kind of hauntings. And things like yeah. that, things that I got comfortable being in that specific facility. But when you yep. get into somebody's home where they 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 lived and breathed every day, you know, yes. except when they went to these horrific things yep. and came back home, um, the energy and the vibrations that that are yep. left in those ha- that those houses and on those property has got to be just oh, yeah. crazy. I mean, between his and, and the several different areas, there's there like I said, there was one building on Fort Bliss that that at night the MPs would not go into. Didn't matter what yeah. was going on, they would not go in there at night. Right. Well, Krista, Krista had just got something, and and she did tell me about this. I've not been able to listen to it yet, but I'm excited to listen to it. But she said she got an EVP of cannon fire. Also, uh, where did you get that at, uh, Krista? I can't remember exactly what place you said it was. But I mean, there? yeah, she's out there. Um, so is okay. Letitia and Paul. I and see Letitia, yep. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's not just Gettysburg that's holding these, no. you know, no. these uh, uh, wartime hauntings. I, it, it, yeah. I, they're everywhere. Any battlefield. Just have Any to battlefield. learn your history. 
Yeah. Learn your I mean, history. Manassas, yeah. Manassas up in that general area is the same way. Manassas is the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you and Krista can vouch for in Missouri, Centralia. I mean, yes. you talk about bloody, bloody Bill Anderson and, and, you know, the early days of the, the James guys, you know? Right. Right. Exactly. So, I mean, if you're thinking about like going to Gettysburg, Hey, look around your area. Oh, she caught the drums at, the, at, at Centralia, what we were just talking about. Well, there you go. There you go. That's what you were just talking about. So check around your area because, I mean, you could have, uh, you know, maybe a five-hour trip. Yeah, <clears throat> and they're there. They mm -hmm. are there. Okay. We, we, <laughs> but we but uh, by all means, if you can get to Gettysburg, go. Yeah. Oh, that's a that's just a trip in by itself. I mean, yeah. just folklore alone. Just folklore alone. So Shiloh, yes. Shiloh, I'm assuming that's what Kevin is talking about, Shiloh over there. So. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now we're yeah. going to look at this next video. I found this one when I was doing the stuff out on TikTok, trying to find the the, the stuff for the, the cannons. This is one I just showed it to you the first time you saw it as well. Right. So this is a video of an apparition going across the road. Now, I have not done any real research into it other than just what it says on the video. Now, I got it on loop right now, and as you can see. Okay, so we're watching, we're looking down kind of like a field, but it has like a a sort of road, you know, you yeah. see tire, you, you know, you can see where the tires have worn in, but it's not a complete road. And we're seeing yeah. this apparition walking across this little road from like a field to a mm -hmm. field. It's not very wide. And no. when you see this apparition walking, you watch it disappear like right in the middle and then it reappears yeah. like in, not a blink in, blink out. It's kind of like it evaporates and then comes back, you know. Yeah, it's like it's almost like it's being followed. It's almost like yeah. there's really two apparitions <laughs> if you look at it. OK, so I'm going to try and bring this up, see if I can get this to a full screen layout. Now, it won't let me do what I want to do with it, so. I mean, I wish happen. we could see more from side to side. Yeah, and unfortunately, but I don't know if work. they had a standing camera there, or is if this was a residual person, or like a residual haunting that just keeps walking across that, and they just set a camera there, yeah. or if they. And it looks like the it, the camera, yeah, yeah. Judging from it, what I'm saying it's a st it's a static camera. They've set it up and left it. There, yeah, it looks, like. it looks like this could be like something they caught the residual haunting walking across this. Yeah, you know this path. Okay, so we got this guy going across now, and he comes from the right all the way across, and then he's gone. Then boom, here comes another one from further out, and he disappears. Right in the middle. Then we got this one again. But they don't look like the same person, do they? Oh, see how it reappeared in the middle? Yeah. I'm going to go back to the very first Okay, so that's we got this one. one here. The, yep, first one. the first one. Yep. Then the next one comes from way over here. It comes across. But it does. It disappears in the middle. It, it disappears right in the middle. But yep, watch. Wait gone. till the third one comes out. This one right here. Now watch watch the second one reappear. Boom, right there. Boom. See it? Now, it, honestly, this is just honestly honestly to me, if you're going to create something like this, that's a lot to go through. I mean, cuz I don't know what you would do to actually recreate that. Chris says residual. That's what I'm leaning on too. That's yeah. what I, I'm leaning yeah. on because if they had that camera set up, sitting there waiting, that means that, you know that this is something that that uh, has been happens reported quite before, a bit, probably. Yeah, and seeing it happen the way they're doing it as it's going across again, you know, because there's the first one again. Yeah, and I don't think it's the same the same figure because it looks like one I'm going across is actually walking at port arms with his weapon. Okay, so then here's not, the next one who one. disappears. Yep. Now this next one he comes up, I believe it looks like he has a weapon. See, it's almost like he's walking. He's got a hands out in front of him. Hey, like he, yeah. Okay. So then, then the second one reappears again. Yeah. So that is quite strange. Tro troops moving in formation is the only thing I can think of, and it's a residual of that. That's what it kind of looks I'm, like to me. 
it has to be with the angle and to be sitting there that long and catch it that means that this has happened before and they're catching yeah. it on film because yeah. you know if somebody was standing there holding that camera it had been moving right with them they might not yeah. have caught all three of them because they'd been following another one definitely definitely I mean, and you know that's that's textbook. Just like we looked at last week with those soldiers in the in the uh, in the wood line, they were going up and back behind the trees and such. Right. That was a residual. This is a residual. I mean, right. you know, there's got to be residuals all over that battlefield. Uh, Kevin, Kevin asked, could this be seen with night vision? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It, you can you can and, see a lot of the stuff with night vision. Absolutely. While this is while this one here isn't night vision. Yeah, I, I, in fact, the vast majority of this stuff you see is caught with my, one night vision, a lot of it. Yeah. Or at, right at the dusk when, you know, when it's just, when cameras are trying to switch between their night filters and their uh, and their day filters, you know, it's at that twilight time that you just can't. Now, this one, I, I think this is more of a morning time, it looks like to me. Yeah, or right at dusk, right at dawn or yeah. dusk, either or. It's just hard to say because I just don't know what time it was taken. But you know, usually, if you're not going to hear somebody out on Gettysburg, somebody run around somewhere in Gettysburg area, it's going to be early morning. It's going to be late in the afternoon, early evening, or maybe late evening. I should say dusk time. Other other times of the day, you know that place is busy with people with sightseers and such. You're right. So. Uh, well, Moon uh, Moon says security cam is a possibility. Yeah. Uh, no. I'm going to say no. Uh, security cameras, That's they not just don't have so. the clarity. They just don't have the clarity that this video has. Yeah. I would think this, well, I, I would say being as 2009, I would say no because, I mean, you're talking about probably max, 5 megapixel max. Right, right. So this is a static camera that somebody set up for the purpose of capturing something. And, yeah. you know, and the security camera, I don't think, would be in the center of a, of a uh, dirt road. Right. And Devin says the tall grass doesn't move on any of them. No. Exactly. Not. And, and, I mean, just like we talked about with the with the, the, the cannon guy. You see this guy, he blocks out the, the center. And then he blocks out until he gets dis disappears. She blocks out. I say she. It looked like a she at first, obviously, but he kind of blocks it out too. So as they're going across, they're blocking out what's behind them. Yeah, and you can even let's, see the, the let's wait. Let's wait moving. for the second one to walk. You can see. No, the that's moving. definitely a male. It had pants. Okay. Oh yeah, no, no. It's just the way it came out of the the. Honestly, when you look, when you look at the second one, this when it comes out of, over here, it looks like a lady coming across at first. See, mm -hmm. but then when he gets out there, you can see the legs and such. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And residual hauntings, yes, they're it's what's a, called a loop. They're on a loop that yeah. they just keep repeating the same moment, this blip in time, over and over and over again. Yeah, and you guys, honestly, y'all sit there talk about this. And they don't lock this place down. You can go out at night. You can sit there out at night on the battlefield, and as long as you're not, you know, in the areas of the uh, the actual battlefield that's actually cordoned off and considered as hollow ground or whatever you want to call it, as long as you're not messing with that, if you're out on the little side side roads and stuff, you can stay out yeah. there all night long and take all the videos you want, all the pictures you want. You can do all the investigation you want. But I'm gonna tell you something right now. There's hey, nothing Jason. more chilling. Right. There's nothing more chilling than seeing that or what I'm about to play next. The one we talked uh, about before this. Well, let, yeah, play this one because this one, this is this is very chilling. Yeah. Let's make sure I got the right one here. Okay, 
Just like Freaky said. You heard the drums, right? Yep. When this was taken, supposedly there was no reenactments going on at the time at all. No preps, no nothing. This was a, from what I understood, it said it was a weekday. Okay. So the drums you're hearing, where are they coming from? First of all, and you know, if you look right here, this is he's on the battlefield. This is part of the one of the uh the areas of the actual battlefield. This is the field out in front of him, you know. <clears throat> right. So as you're hearing it, you hear it start, faint, kind of gets a little bit louder. And stops. Now, if it was actual drum corps or drums for the battlefield, it wouldn't have stopped unless they, the formation had stopped, and it wouldn't have stopped that quick. And it then it takes it, it takes its time coming back in as you hear. Then it comes back. And it's still in and out. And then it sounds like it's right there next to you. I don't know. You know. It, it, you, it's just like, it's not only the fact that, you know, we're hearing these things and, and yeah. uh, they're not supposed to be there. No, they're not. <clears throat> but what it signifies to me just gives me chills. It's kind of like when you hear those drums, somebody's going to die. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, it's just, <clears throat> I don't know, it just chokes me up a little bit. It's just, well, it's just, it's, it's scary. It's chilling. It's just like, you know, and that's what the history does to me. It gets me very emotional, yeah. especially with stuff like yep. this, because you're actually hearing the sounds right before somebody's going to die. Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it, it just makes me very emotional. Um, it's one thing to hear the cannons and, and the, the, you know, the things that, you know, that you associate with war. But once you hear that, you just, you can actually picture them in your mind, what yep. they're doing and, and what's going to happen. Yeah. Because, and, you know, I've marched in many parades, many parades. Yeah. And you hear people uh, when they're talking. And, what right. Krista says, Krista says, sounds like Sherman's march to me played during civil war as they are marching into battle. Exactly. That's and, what, you know. First thing I was thinking right there. Now, like you said, Krista mm -hmm. would, as Krista, you know, would they stop at those spots that we were talking about? They would keep rolling. It would not, that drum would not have stopped. It would have kept going the entire time they're marching. So, and like I said, I can only go off of what people said that there weren't any reenactments going on at this time. So, that's, this one kind of gets me, like you said, because of the sound, first of all, and, and I know what the drums mean. Those drums, even though they sound like, hey, it's a march or whatever, that's keeping those those troops in line as they're marching to battle. As it, right. That beat is keeping them all in time, going straight forward as fast as they can go, you know, without running until that charge is either sounded by the bugle or they have to kneel and take take a firing line, skirmish line. So. Yeah, I don't uh, know. Uh, okay. That, so, yeah. There, she said, yeah. The, so. Those drums would not have stopped if they were marching it. If they were marching it, unless they were they, the 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 charge was given, those drums would have kept going the whole way. So, what do you think happened? Do you think that the? I think it's an echo of the past. Okay, so if you think it's residual, do you think they actually stopped, or we just stopped hearing the loop and then hearing, it began again? We just stopped, we just hearing, stopped hearing, hearing the loop. Stopped hearing it because. If it was if it was real deal, I mean, in, in anybody that's done the reenactments, like Krista said, it doesn't stop. They literally mm -hmm. until the, the skirmish is started or skirmish line, mm -hmm. and most time it'll keep going at that. Even then, until the drummer's knocked out, you know. Uh, yeah. Well, Bristol says line. Bristol says there may not have been reenactments, but there might have been in practicing somewhere nearby. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. could have, and we don't know that for sure. Mm -mm. We really don't. Because, but I can only go off of what was stated with the video that there were no reenactments at the time. And uh, Glenn's right; Sherman's March was that following year. But the name of the 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 drum uh, the drum line that is being played 
it's called Sherman's March. It's to keep the, 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 the lines in tow and keep everybody, you know, dressed right and moving as a unit at, at the same time. And oh, yeah, you know, because you wondered how everything would have turned out if they believed in guerrilla warfare back then. I'm just saying, not to bring that up or to even talk about it, but you know, I wonder if the wars it, it would have changed. That's the what outcome. we'll talk about Centralia next. <laughs> we'll talk about Centralia when we we'll talk about guerrilla warfare because there's mm -hmm. there's the there's the guy that started it all. If you want to get right down to it, there you go. There you go. But like I said, I wondered if it would have changed the direction of the war. Um, if they were the words I was trying to, that's the words I was trying to say. Sorry. I wasn't trying to say the, the march part. The drum cadence, like when you hear a, a drill sergeant singing cadence to his troops when he's walking them, when he's marching them from place to place and such. That's right. when the drum is actually taking the place of the drill sergeant. So anyway, sorry. Flashback. Got it. Now there you go. Okay, I got one more. Okay, let's go one the, more. You didn't hear this one very well the last time. so I, I can't hear one. it. So if you can turn up your volume at home, turn it yep. up because I, I can't. So I can't hear it. So you're actually going to have to tell me what it's about. What can yeah. you hear? I want to see what everybody else hears first. And Kevin's right again. Both sides do the same things due to the officers and going through military school together. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he's okay. absolutely right. You couldn't tell the difference. I mean, if they were too close together and the union the union was doing their drum cadence, it could have easily affected the the, uh, the guys on the Confederate side and vice versa. It just depends on how close they were. And right. uh, quite frankly, by the time they got close enough to do that, they were probably already in, in open warfare at that point. So, right. Okay. All right. So here we go with this one. Now, y'all, like I said, turn your volumes up and listen. Turn your volume up or if you've got earphones on, you know, something. Yeah. That's why uh, I, think because that's why I, I can cannot hear, hear it. Can. Yeah, I cannot hear it. 6 I was on the wrong one. Wrong one. Sorry. That was quick. I was wrong one. All right. Here we go. Oh, there you go. Way up in old Linville Mountain, where the bear and the cat in my range, there's right, a strange so they, they that on light there at the end. can be seen every night that no scientist or hunter. Yeah, that could be any one of a hundred things right there, obviously. So, yeah, I don't, I don't take much stock in that. Like I said, it's so no. grainy and it's something they threw in at the end. So, now the shouting is what gives me. And they, there's several of them said somebody shouting. I, and it sounds like somebody hooting, not hooting and hollering, but hollering like they're yelling out commands and such. It's just yelling. Yeah, see right there, I can hear, I can hear definitely what sounded in the background right there. It sounded like somebody that was in a charge mode hollering as they're running into battle that's what it sounded like to me but you can't make out any of the words right there now i'm going to send you this afterwards so you can actually let's do it with headphones when you get a chance yeah so you can hear that part because that that whole area right there uh the the whoops i heard i i didn't attribute them to the battle or anything i attributed them to just wildlife in the woods now might be a dog think, or something yeah do i do i think there's a bigfoot in there no not one bit because there's just too many people around there you think or too many daily because it is kind of rural yeah but it, but then again are, how do we know yeah, we don't that's the problem because it is rural and there is a lot of area out there Like that right there. It sounded like, uh, I, I know where she's kind of sounding like almost like a whoop, but it sounded more like shouting to me, like somebody in the distance. 
Pancho said he's willing to bet that that's real battle sounds because they, you know, uh, because it was so intense. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm with him on that. Like right there, the whoop 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 that I just heard. That was a that sounded like a bird to me. That one right there sounded like another. Uh, I don't know if it was a bird or some other wildlife, but because I can't really tell from that sound. It sounds like a bird to me of some sort. But that part? No, that's that's battlefield. That's battlefield cries right there. Right. Right. That that's straight <laughs> out battlefield cries cries. Oh, I, oh. I we should we should invade yes. the front porch one day and just do nothing but t- Gettysburg. Yes, Krista. We yes, yes. I'm saying yes. I'm like, yeah. I absolutely Take, think so. Hey, Tex, we're taking over your your uh, channel for a little bit. <laughs> no, she's talking about the whole Texas Front Porch group going to, to Gettysburg. Oh, wait. Oh, a trip. Damn, I thought he was taking over the show. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, gee, let me think about it. Okay. Mutiny. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be the first time I've done it to him. <laughs> right. <clears throat> okay. And... That pretty well much covers all the ones that I have, but I mean, uh, you guys, I don't think I've got anything on here that we've we've listened to or looked at today that I could put a tinfoil on at all. Honestly, no, I, I I I can't. I mean, I I can't. Yeah, and it, it's the the evidence is is super compelling. Like I said, you know, at the beginning of the show, that I can't say for sure that if it were something else. I mean, of course the. Yeah. The audio that we were hearing about the 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 drum cadence and yeah, is it possible? Yeah, absolutely possible that somebody yeah. was out there and they were just practicing. But let me tell you how many times they do reenactments in Gettysburg. Yeah, they don't have to really get out there and practice. They're doing the same the same march every single time, every single week. You know, every so week. I don't think that they would have to practice, but that's just my opinion. I mean, they could. We don't know what time yeah. of year. It could be the first, you know, they're getting out there and getting, you know, uh, warmed up for the rest of the year or, you know, exactly. teaching I mean, teaching new drummers. Who knows? But. Yeah. I mean, we just, we don't know. I mean, but Mm-mm. Lord, Lord, Lord. I mean, that place. And this is, I probably, this is the one place in the one area other than the Patty film, the Patterson film. Patterson Gimlin that that I go into almost fanboy mode on because Gettysburg is so and be you know so it's so cool to me because having to deal with military history for so long you know especially yeah in the army every 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 NCO school you go to what's the first thing you do you start studying more of the military history what happened with this war what happened with that war we were studying you know defense in depth you know which right. really started because. They did it with the Battle of the Bulge, right? It really well, started. It really started with with uh, Napoleon back uh, against the Russians back in the seventeen yeah. hundreds. So, well, Krista was talking about reenactment uh, reenactments that they don't they don't they just give them a brief overview of yeah. of what they're supposed to reenact and then and then they go to it. Uh, we were just talking about the drum line pr- practicing yeah. the the particular march, and yeah. um, I mean that, that could cadence. be possible, but if you're doing yeah. it. And Gettysburg on a weekly basis, there's not really much practice yeah, would it be needed. The, would it be the same drummers every single time unless they were sick? And you probably got a backup, you would think. You would think, yeah. Yeah. So I, I so, but that's just my opinion. Now that's that's not saying that it didn't happen. You yeah. Know? Uh let's see. I want us to put something right here. You have any other I don't I don't know vids. What we should try next week? Should we go after like ships? You you've been dropping that hint for about thirty minutes now, so I'm guessing I'm. Going I, to I'm go thinking do so. I'm research. thinking we should go after haunted ships. You know, you know, just because you know, like the Bermuda Triangle, and they talk about finding these ghost ships, and that there's nobody on them coming out of that triangle, and you know, there's a yeah. lot of evidence out there. There is. There's a lot, and. Like I said, we could do a whole show alone on the Queen Mary, just by itself. Right, I right. Mean, but there's the Queen Mary yeah, is. Like, yeah. Wow. 
and the one you were talking about down on the coast of Texas. You're talking about the the battleship Texas. That whole area is haunted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's I think we can find a lot about about uh, boats. I, th- okay. I think we should I'll do that. I think we boat. should go after that. All right. Now I, I am going to get with. I got to get with uh, Krista when she's available because remember the gentleman that took the the Waverly picture. Yes. I wanted to get her in to talk about his stuff and see what we could see and look at some of that stuff if she'd be willing to do it. But I got to figure out when she's going to be available and not staying up all night on Saturday nights doing crazy stuff with Rob. Hey, I was there. Well, she's here too, which is kind of cool. And she's here too. See, see, see. (laughs) I didn't even get, I didn't even get drunk last night. What the heck? Right, right, right. Um, You know, but Sundays are usually her family time. Something must've happened where she could actually get on and, Listen to us tonight. Um, but yes, while I'm thinking about it, uh, Infamous Minds does come on at 7 o'clock tonight. Don't forget to yep. tune in. It's the Oklahoma yep. Bigfoot Killer. Yep, and I'm going to be going over to listen to see what they got to say about it for a little while. and then uh, It's, we'll it, it's it amazing because this guy's got a screw loose, and you know he does. A screw loose? That's an understatement. That's a major I- understatement. I didn't say what screw loose. It could have been the main one, you know. Yeah, he got a sprocket can't, gone is what he's got. Can't keep all his Fruit Loops in the box. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, don't talk <laughs> about my cereals. All right. Okay. Uh, what is that, Poncho? You could call it boats and booze. <laughs> Beef, boats, boats and hose. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to go there, uh, Poncho. No, 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 no. I, I, like, I like not getting hit, okay? All right. right. Okay, well, guys, I guess we we're you. we're done for this week. Um, yep. We weren't realizing that Tex was uh, going on at seven tonight, or we would have had a lot more um, stuff to go well, over. I, I kind of like it at the hour because it doesn't bore everybody for too long, too. So, and I tend to exactly. if I get if I go over an hour, I start to ramble kind of like what I'm doing right now. <laughs> well, it's a good time for for dinner for me, so that's where I'm headed. Well, there you go. All right, let me see. Not banners, where I'm at. Okay, guys, we will see y'all next week. Same true time, same true channel. Ooh, I sound like Adam West now, don't I? Ooh. Bye. Bye, everybody.